So guys, this show is going to be about life hacks for reptile keepers. So basically, as a reptile breeder, I have of course come up with all kinds of ways to make things the most efficient and easy as possible. Because after all, when you're keeping a beautiful animal like a snake, the whole idea is not to work for it, but to enjoy the animal. So I'm going to give you guys a bunch of really helpful tips that are kind of going to make your life as a reptile keeper easier so that you can just get the most enjoyment as possible. And I'm going to start with water bowls. Now typically when you have one or two or three snakes you have these water bowls whether they're plastic or ceramic you know whatever. Well the problem is is that you have to wash them out every single you know every two three days you know whatever and a whole bunch of things. Number one it's a pain in the butt to wash them out. Number two ceramic bowls you drop it BAM breaks. Now what do you do? You know that takes time it's energy. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is plastic deli cups right here, right? But you know, if you put a plastic deli cup in a cage, it's gonna tip over pretty easy. Well, look at this. You can use these couplings like that. These guys right here, it's a plastic PVC coupling just like this, which is, you know, just super simple. You can buy them at the store and you just find a deli cup that fits into it perfectly like that. Now, doesn't tip over and the thing that's beautiful about that is that at the end of the day if you're changing the waters out you just buy a sleeve of these deli cups you can just take the one out dump it out you can recycle it you can clean it if you want to or you can throw it away I prefer you recycle it but the point is it takes two seconds fill it up put it in and you're done and the thing that's good is you can do all kinds of different sizes you know they make little teeny ones like this for deli cups this size for the baby snakes and even smaller ones if you want to. It's a great option to really make cleaning waters quick, efficient, and to make sure that it's completely disinfected because if you've got a crock like this and you don't clean it out really good and use disinfectant, there's still bacteria in there. With a brand new deli cup every single time, your snake's gonna be happy. It's just gonna be super easy for you. You know, as I'm teaching you guys cool life hacks on how you can keep reptiles the simplest and easiest way, remember you can follow my daily vlog over at the Brian Barczyk page. I'll put the link in the description or you can click this annotation here. Again, Monday through Friday, every day, you get a little dose of my life. So again, this is life hack for snake and reptile keepers. Things that are going to make your life simpler, easier, and faster so that you can enjoy your animal to the best possible ability. Now, if you have multiple snakes or even if you have just one reptile, you have to always wash your hands every time you either touch it or clean the cage or whatever. So we use these just rubber gloves. I mean, that's simple. You can buy these at a food store. You can buy them at a drug store. You can buy them anywhere, really. And it really helps. That way, number one, you don't get a bunch of junk on your hands. Number two, if you are going to be, let's say you have a bearded dragon and then you want to clean your snake, the best thing to do is to not transfer the bacteria from one to another. So that means you'll have to wash your hands and go on. Well, if you have 10 or 12 or 15 or a thousand snakes, you're going to be washing your hands an awful lot. So these gloves are absolutely I mean, we couldn't live without these gloves. And, and let's face it, every now and then you forget to wash your hands after you clean something. And that's pretty gross, guys, if you're eating something. So anyways, this moves on to the next one after the gloves, which is spot clean your cages. Now, if you use a bedding like this Aspen Sandy Chips right here, if you only or let's say you have once a week where you're like, oh, I'm going to clean my cage once a week, it's probably going to get pretty dirty. Now you have to tear the entire cage down uh, from scratch. You gotta bleach it out, you gotta wash it. Now if you just basically just go in every single day and remove the junk from the cage, you know, shed skins, a little bit of poop, if there's any soiled areas, and you just kind of just work it around like this. The thing that's great about this is the fact that this cage could stay this way for say a month or two months or even a little bit longer. And as you pull out bedding, you just add some fresh bedding again. And then when it becomes too soiled, you break it down and do it all over again. But this will really extend your bedding for a long period of time, saving you a ton of critical time that it's going to cost you every single week to tear that cage down and break it all down, right? So again, gloves, 
and spot clean. One of the things that we all deal with when it gets to winter time, especially when you're in a colder climate, is humidity. Now what happens is that as the outside temperatures drop, your furnace comes on to heat the air inside, and what does it do? It dries the air out. And unless you have a super industrial sized humidifier, your humidity level is gonna go from 50 or 60% down to 25 or 30%. And when you have a pet reptile, 30% isn't going to be good because if it's a snake, it's not going to shed well. If it's a lizard, there's going to be issues and it can cause even health problems. So how do you get that humidity up? The first thing, of course, if you have a tank like this is there's a lot of sphagnum moss in here. You can wet that down, but it's not really that great to have reptiles on a wet bedding. So that can be problematic in itself. The best thing to probably do is to take a towel just like this, this towel here, and follow me for a second, just dampen it up just a little bit. You know, just, you don't want it to be soaking wet, but just a little bit of a damp towel, wring it out the best you can, so that again, it's damp, but now it's soaking wet. You don't want it to be dripping down on your reptile. You just want it damp, and then you come back over to your, your aquarium here, or whatever type, even this works even in a rack system on top of a rack. You just basically fold it up, and you cover the majority of that screen. Now, not only does it reduce the ventilation a little bit, which causes that humidity to be trapped in, because you gotta remember, any bedding that has dampness, the water bowl, everything is gonna raise the humidity up. Now you're trapping that humidity inside, and the fact that you have a damp towel on top actually aids the humidity as well. So this is a great way to get that humidity up without a real expensive fix. Now keep in mind, if you do have a light bulb on one side, make sure that there's plenty of room between the light bulb and the towel. You don't want to catch the towel on fire, but this is a great fix to get that humidity up, especially in the cold winter months. So now let's get to disinfectant. What are you using to clean your reptile? Now, there's so many commercial products available, but what I really suggest is something that is in a concentrated form. You know, we use this Lysol IC, which is a quaternary disinfectant. And my point is, is that you can buy something like this relatively inexpensively, and then you go to the Home Depot or whatever store you want to go to and you can buy a spray bottle like this for about a dollar or so and the thing that's great about this concentrate is the fact that it doesn't take a whole lot so you basically just pour a little bit of this concentrate in the in this bottle you know right about there or so and that's it and then you fill it up with water now the point is is that you're gonna you know, you certainly, if you only have a handful of reptiles, you don't need to concentrate this big. You can buy small, small amounts of concentrate and it's gonna last you forever. And it's just, it's the cheapest way and most effective way to make sure that your reptiles stay clean. And again, you always have it on hand, you know? So for just maybe, this might cost 60 cents per entire spray bottle when you use a concentrate. Whereas if you go to the store and buy a cleaner, it might be three or four dollars for a little tiny bottle like this that's only gonna last you a couple weeks. This is gonna last you forever long and it only costs 50 or 60 cents. So again, concentrated disinfectant, whether it's the Lysol Quaternary or it's, uh, you know, whatever, F10 or Novasan, there's all kinds of products that are really good, affected at cleaning. You can even use bleach and water. That way you wanna use about a five to 10% bleach solution per water. But that smell is kind of really intense. So I personally prefer something like this Lysol. So again, really a great way to save you a lot of money. And that way you always have disinfectant on hand. You don't have to worry about running out. All right. So this is really for someone that has a slightly larger collection. Say you have 50 animals, a hundred animals, or whatever the case may be, you know, filling up water dishes, spraying down animals to mist can take time and energy. So what we do is we'll actually use these hose reels here, just like this. You know, and, and it, this is just literally a hose reel that they use for like air compression and so on like that. And we have it hooked up to a water pipe right here. And then there's an on and off valve right on this side here. And basically, once I flip the water on, bang, you're good to go. Now you can take these guys like this and I could just roll it out however far I want. And if I wanna spray down Karma the Chameleon, all I do is go like that, you know, it's really convenient. And if I, I use a 50 foot roll, so I can get to 50 feet of cages without having to go back and forth to the sink. Now, the one thing you might ask yourself is, well, if it's hooked up to the water, how do I know what temperature is? You don't wanna be spraying Karma or, or some of your other animals with 
freezing cold water or hot water for that matter. Well, I've got the solution here. Follow me. And uh, it's actually a water temperature mixing valve that you can buy right here. Now, you do need a plumber to do it, but this is the water mix mixing valve right here. And you can see this line here goes to all of, or I'm sorry, this line here goes to all of my real hoses and you actually control the temperatures right here hot and cold and it actually continues to keep it so we keep it at about 85 degrees so all the water that goes through these pipes here are 85 degrees again that's a little bit advanced when you start talking about if you only have one or two snakes but if you have a bunch trust me that can be a really handy thing to have a hose that is temperature controlled that you can water and spray everything in your entire collection we all know that snakes and a lot of lizards like hide boxes. You know, things like this Tessera corn right here, which by the way, looks absolutely gorgeous. Take a look at that little monkey right there. And again, this is a corn snake, but it's a, uh, a co-dominant version, which makes this really cool pattern go on. But regardless, we all know that snakes actually do better when they have a hide box in them. But you know, what hide box do you want to do? A couple things going on here. Number one, if you buy a plastic one, which is completely fine, uh, number one, it costs money. Number Number two, you have another thing to clean, right? Which, you know, if you have one or two snakes, that's fine. But again, if you're trying to reduce time and spend more time with your animal and less time cleaning, this is a great opportunity here. You can go to any food supply type place and buy these. These are just little styrofoam meat cartons. This is what they pack meat in, right? And this literally costs about three cents. That's about it. And what I do is I just take a razor blade and I just kind of cut it down the middle like this and then I'll snap it like that. And it's a perfect hide box. So take a look at this, guys. I just put that in the back right here. Now that snake will hide up in there right like that. Close it up. Now, listen, that may last a month or two. Who knows? But if it does get soiled, you just, you know, get rid of it and put the other side in. So for two or three cents, you have two hide boxes that you can use for however long. So again, not only does it save you time in cleaning the hide box, this plastic hide box, but it also saves you a lot of money. Now again, if you have a really cool rock looking hide box, that's okay, nothing wrong with it. This is just again, if you wanna do something that's quick, easy, and inexpensive. For this next tip, I'm gonna to have to go up front, so let's go do that. And this one is all about using something that we use a lot, which is a paper cutter. And uh, you can buy these of all different sizes relatively inexpensively. You know, again, it's like at a craft store or anything like that. And uh, these guys are super, super good when you're saying, let's say you use paper towel or paper uh, for your enclosure. And, and in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use paper towel. All right, so let's, for this example, we're just gonna use paper towel. And uh, and I, you know, so what I'll do is I'll just rip off a bunch of layers of this. So, you know, maybe, you know, you don't wanna go more than maybe 10 or 12 layers thick, but uh, something that'll still easily cut with these cutters. But, you know, say you get, you know, half dozen layers or whatever, and you know that your boxes are half the size of this paper because normally you would fold them over or something, which is completely fine too. But if you wanna really move quickly, then you just go through, you have, you know, where you need to cut them, bam. Now all of a sudden, within a couple seconds, you have 15 or 20 cage liners ready to go right off the bat. That way you're not tearing them, you're not folding, you know, all the things that take time. You know, because again, these kind of life hacks for snake and reptile keepers are all about saving you time because in the end, the more time that you spend cleaning and doing the maintenance, the less time you get to actually enjoy the animal. So regardless, these are kind of the first things that I thought of when I was thinking about what could help you really save time and just get the enjoyment back in everything. I hope you'll utilize some of these. And by the way, down in the comments below, let me know if you've seen something uh, that I haven't mentioned that would work really cool that other viewers can get a great thing about. And I'll go ahead and try to update this in the future. So until next week, I hope you've enjoyed Snake Bites and you can follow me on all my social media stuff at Snake Bites TV. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites.